Okay. So I think, uh, oops. Okay. Um, so today I'll be presenting my work on neural networks for singing voice processing in polyphonic music signals. This was a work done in the MTG in Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona from 2017 to 2021 and was partly funded by the, uh, the Trompa project. Uh, I was then under the supervision of Dr. Emilia Gomez and the committee today as uh, uh, Dr. Antoine just announced is Dr. Antoine Litigres, Dr. Estefania Cano and Dr. Marius Miron. So um, let's start with the motivation for, for the research. Um, so basically, as well, the whole committee is also from the field of source separation. I was also quite interested in the field of source separation. And in particular, in this, uh, in this thesis, we were focusing on contemporary popular music. In particular, separating the vocals from the accompaniment in a musical mixture. In addition to this, we were also studying the um, sort of separation for soprano, alto, tenor, and bass choral mixtures, and representing all this during the during the next forty-five minutes to one hour. So, um, sort of separation over the last, let's say, decade has uh, seen a lot of improvements. But earlier, it was mostly the TSP based and using. Um, knowledge-based algorithms like uh, non-negative uh, matrix factorization and ICA. But over the last decade, a lot of deep learning-based algorithms have been proposed and have indeed raised the level of performance in, in source separation, particularly for musical source separation. Most of these algorithms use deep learning uh, to estimate time frequency masks, or not even time frequency masks, but a, some sort of filtering in the waveform domain. This results in the separation of uh, the accompaniment from the vocals. But there's a caveat here that the vocals which are separated are the processed vocals. And this comes to an understanding of how the uh, mixing process in the contemporary popular music actually works. So when a singer is recording, the clean vocals are processed by effects. These can be contemporary effects such as growling or reverb or even vocoder effects, uh, the talk box, the VAVA filter, which became popular in the, in the 70s and 80s. So this results in a form of processed vocals, which are mixed together to form a musical mixture. So, I mean, um, in, uh, like in most music, they, there is a singer who follows a score, the score which contains information about uh, the linguistic information and the melody, and this is used to create the, the vocal track that is then processed and mixed. So the motivation for this um, thesis was to somehow extract the clean vocals from a musical mixture. And the idea which uh, came to me was to use voice synthesis, which is also a field which has grown in leaps and bounds over the last um, seven years to 10 years. And the idea was to uh, use vo voice synthesis from a musical mixture to generate the clean vocals, which were present in the musical mixture. There are some, some applications we could think of our analysis and transcription of vocals, which were present in the, in, in the mixture with effects. If, they, if the effects are, so if the uh, vocal track is somehow synthesized without these effects, then the analysis and transcription becomes easier. It's easier for enhanced listening and active listening uh, purposes, where a person with uh, hearing disabilities will have an easier time focusing on the vocals, the, the lyrical content and the melodic content if the effects are not uh, overpowering. For teaching applications, such as the ones we'll propose a little later, and also for restoration of older damaged recordings, which uh, well older than perhaps the digitization uh, of music age. So to get at the synthesis, we look into some voice synthesis algorithms. They, well, uh, the most famous one is the text-to-speech paradigm, which is basically converting a textual input into a speech signal. Over the last five, six years, let's say a lot of uh, deep learning algorithms have been proposed for this purpose. A lot of them are end-to-end, -end, but a lot of them use vocoders. Now vocoders, 
as, uh, as an intermediate step. So vocoders are basically compact representation, compact vocal coding, uh, which can be used to resynthesize a speech signal. So a lot of deep learning based vocoders have been proposed over the years, but uh, well, we'll come back to this a bit later, I think. So as we see from, from TTS, the input is a textual input, which just provides um, the linguistic content. But in the case of the singing voice, the input is a score, which provides not only the linguistic content, but also the melodic content, which, which the synthesis system has to follow. It's a, the violin in TTS, the prosody is being modeled. In this case, the modeling is of the, of the melody as well as some microprosody. Uh, so, yeah, this is it. so the score is providing linguistic content, the melody, and the third element which is missing from a vocal, uh, from a singing voice synthesizer is, a, is the timbre. And this comes from the singer. The singer who is uh, singing the score will uh, likely provide his own timbre or his or her timbre as well as his or her inflections to the melody. But the linguistic content will come from the score. Right. So when we're doing, when we're thinking of separation via synthesis, we think of the input as not coming from the singer and the score, but coming from the musical mixture. So from the musical mixture, we want to somehow extract the linguistic content, the melody, and the timbre. From this, we can generate vocal, vocoder features from which we can synthesize the singing voice signal. So uh, let's get into it. The first idea for separation via synthesis. Um, we first have a musical mixture. The idea is first to just estimate the vocoder features. We have a musical mixture as an input. We use a deep learning based algorithm to identify these uh, vocoder features, and then we can synthesize the clean vocals. Now, the vocoder we decided to use in this case is termed as the world vocoder. It was proposed by uh, Masanori Maurice in uh, 2016. And it has been proven to you, uh, uh, been proven to be useful for singing voice synthesis, in particular because it can, at least to a great degree, disentangle between the melody and the linguistic content and the timbre of the of the signal uh, of the uh, singing voice signal. And this is quite useful in the case of singing voice, where you want to, these two elements to be somehow disentangled. We use some dimensionality reduction on the world vocoder features, and we represent these as the compressed spectral envelope. This has, well, this is used throughout this thesis and will have uh, 64 dimensions per time frame. So in the first idea for singing voice uh, parameter extraction, we use a musical mixture as an input. This is passed through a non-autoregressive WaveNet inspired architecture which can look both into the past, like the original WaveNet, and values from the future. And using these, it can generate the current value of the compressed spectral envelope, which is used for synthesis. So we use, basically in this case, we used three different networks. The first one will pre predict the compressed spectral envelope. The output from this, as well as the musical mixture, was passed to the second network, which predicted the fundamental frequency for that, uh, for the input, and these two were finally passed to the voicing uh, network, the third network, which predict the voicing probability of the uh, of the output signal. And these together were used for synthesis of the clean singing voice signal. So we did some objective and subjective evaluation of the of the proposed model. The subjective evaluation was done using an AV listening test or an online AV listening test. Now, the data set we used here was uh, actually the Aikala data set because it had clean vocals without effects, so it was easier to evaluate our model. Um, we had about 15 respondents, all, who, all of whom were familiar with, uh, well, they were all native Chinese uh, Mandarin speakers. So we see that our model, the SS or separation via synthesis model, outperforms both our, uh, our deep learning based baseline and a, um, well, a knowledge-based baseline, which is the fast uh, and off-the-shelf implementation of the uh, non-negative matrix factorization um, algorithm. So we see our, 
our algorithm actually does quite well in terms of source uh, isolation, but still has some room for improvement in terms of the audio quality. We can have a look at some examples. Um, just let me know if you can hear the sound. I hope, oops. You should be able to hear it now. So this is the input mixer, the ground truth vocals. The synthesized output by our proposed model. And the output from the deep learning based baseline which we used for evaluation. So as I said, um, it, well, we'll get back to the conclusions, but we also have some objective evaluation. We calculated the mill substitute distortion over the synthesized signal and the and the ground truth. And we can see that the output for this, the quality output is more or less uh, equal, even though our proposed algorithm is a bit lower on this side. And we also use the source to source to interference ratio from the uh, BSS eval um, evaluation framework, and this shows that, well, it confirms what we saw earlier with the subjective evaluation that there is no, there is very little interference from the, from the rest of the sources in our output signal. But, but we can conclude from this evaluation as well, as we said, there is very little or no interference from the backing track. This is because the signal is, is synthesized, so it does not have any of the backing track. There is a lot of room for improvement of the quality of the synthesis. And well, we see that different vocoders can be tried to actually improve the um, the quality of the synthesis, but we'll come back to that later. The objective evaluation metrics that we tried, including the SDR and SAR, were not actually giving us a good measure of the actual output which we saw. So moving to the next step, which is synthesis parameter generation. So this is singing voice synthesis, which we saw earlier, which is taking information from the singer and the score to generate vocoder features and the singing voice signal. So when we, uh, when I was, when we were doing this work, there there were some singing voice synthesizing uh, synthesis systems available, and a lot of them, I'd say most of them, if not all of them, were based on on auto regressive models, wherein the output of one frame is fed back to the network to predict the output of the next frame. It basically takes the outputs from the past as well as the current conditioning to generate the clean vocals. What we wanted to do somehow was uh, propose a feed-forward network for um, for fast, efficient uh, uh, synthesis of the, of the singing voice given the sing score and the singer as an input. But we saw without, we're just using a fast-forward CNN model convolutional neural network was we were getting some very unnatural synthesis output. To, um, to sort of alleviate this problem, to improve the naturalness of the, of the synthesis, we used a generative adversarial network framework for training. In particular, we used the Wojcicki uh, variant of the, uh, of the GAN to train the network. This consists of a generator a feed-forward model as well as a discriminator, and both of these play a well. They play a win-lose game wherein the generator is trying to fool the discriminator, and the discriminator is trying to catch the the generator. And as such, this leads to an improvement in the in the output, which has been shown, especially when uh, augmented with uh, with a reconstructive loss. So for our network, we were using a conditioning of the conditioning uh, continuous. F0 contour, the singer identity, as well as the phoneme of a particular frame. The singer identity and the phoneme were represented as one hot vectors. And all of these three conditioning layers were passed um, through one by one convolutions to generate 64 features, which were concatenated together and passed to the network. Our network had a unit architecture wherein the corresponding layers of the encoder and decoder are uh, 
are concatenated together to produce the output. So um, before we get to evaluation, there's some bonus evaluation because we were well, I, we were putting all the code as open source code. So it turns out Facebook, while doing their their research on singing voice synthesis, actually used our model and it did quite well in their listening test. You can see that we have a high similarity to the output uh, to the target speaker and also a very high identification rate as compared to the other baselines, which they even their own baseline use here. And we can come back to our own evaluation. So we compared with one of the, at that time, I'd say the state of the art, uh, which was a, a um, autoregressive model, as stated earlier, and our own model. And um, we see that while a preference is given to both the original and the NPSS outputs, the autoregressive NPSS outputs, we see that uh, more or less the uh, um, the performance is quite comparable, and this also follows the results which were done by the by the other researchers. Um, so maybe we can hear some examples. This is the original sound, the original track. Silent night, holy night. And uh, another thing I'd like to add, the data set we used for this training was actually very, very small as compared to data sets used for, for other uh, synthesis algorithms. So uh, here is the output from our model of the same reconstruction with the same singer. So and with a change in singing. And finally, the bass line which we use, it sounds quite better. Silent night, holy night. But again, actually, these things are quite subjective and also depends on the application of, of where it has to be used. So uh, uh, I'd say it works on power with the, uh, it's comparable at least with the autoregressive state of the art at that point. Of course, uh, more singing voice synthesizers have been proposed since that time. In fact, it's a very hot field of research right now. So we, uh, we propose this synthesis framework with a feed forward CNN which is comparable with the autoregressive state of the art. And we also realized that a complementary loss, a reconstruction loss along with the Washerstein GAN loss actually improved the results a lot. So, um, well, finally we can come to the third part, which is a, uh, synthesizing the singing voice signal by extracting the, the content from the musical mixer. So we need to extract the linguistic content, the melody, the timbre, use these to generate the vocoder features and use that to synthesize a signal, singing signal. So the first question which actually comes to mind is what's, what is the representation of linguistic content that we can use? In the previous, uh, in the WGAN sing, we were using phonemes, but phonemes have a restriction that they are very, uh, they are actually language dependent. What we wanted to try was something which is uh, at least in theory language independent and also speaker independent. So the idea actually came from another field of features, which is called voice conversion, which is ironically what I'm working on now. But um, the idea is basically to convert the speech by one speaker to a, the same speech signal as if it was spoken by another speak speaker. So basically the linguistic content has to be retained but the listener should say that the, um, should, should be able to perceive the signal as coming from speaker two instead of speaker one. So um, um, one of the most popular or best performing at least at the time um, voice conversion algorithms was the auto VC, which states, which has a very simple um, architecture and modeling idea, which is that a small bottleneck can disentangle speaker dependent information from speaker independent information in a speech signal, provided that the decoder of the autoencoder is provided 
the, uh, the speaker related information. So for this, there is a speech by speaker one. It passes through a bottleneck, which uh, derives the linguistic content and her one hot representation of the speaker is passed through the decoder, which generates the, uh, the speech signal for speaker two. So the first thing we do is uh, adapt this uh, audio VC architecture to the singing voice by bringing in the world vocoder. So we do not use the F0 information, just the vocoder uh, parameters in our system. We train this by going from singer one. We have the same bottleneck, a one hot representation of the singer, and this is used to generate the uh, output by singer two. So once we have the auto VC trained, we use it to train a single dependent separation network. So what this does is we have the pre-trained auto VC, which is getting the linguistic content in the bottleneck. We have the musical mixture, which is going through the bottleneck as well. So this will replicate, well, we use the L1 loss to uh, replicate the linguistic features from the auto VC to the SDN, and we provide a one hot representation of the singer to generate the output. So in essence, this uh, becomes a singer dependent network where we have a musical mixture, getting the linguistic content and the melody from the musical mixture, getting the timbre from the singer using a one hot uh, representation, using these to generate vocoder features and that's the single uh, singing signal. You can play some examples. So we have the mixture input. Imagine there's no heaven. And the output. Imagine there's no heaven. Another example. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. So these examples are actually not, I mean, as you know, they're, they're not, you they can say they're real world examples because they're not from the, neither the song nor the training uh, speaker is actually, or sorry, the singer is actually in the training set that we use for training. So these are just out of the box examples which we tried on and we get quite decent results. We'll also play one last example. This is actually with extreme effects. So I could, I will ask you to just maybe lower the volume a little bit. Uh, but this uh, basically, um, this uh, research company called DataBots contacted me and uh, we had, uh, we did some collaboration on this. This is a an open song. It's with heavy metal and heavily processed vocals. So maybe just lower your volume a bit. There's no heaven. Oops, oops, oops. <laughs> and the output sounds a bit robotic, but so uh, the robotic part is because there is no F0, we just use a single F0 for the synthesis, but it retains the linguistic content which was present in the signal, which is exactly what we were aiming for. So once we have this single dependent network trained, we can maybe increase the volume again. So once we have the uh, SDN trained, we use it to train a single independent network. The idea for this was actually the same as the, as the uh, auto VC. So if we provide the decoder with the linguistic content, then it should be, the bottleneck should be able to uh, learn just a representation of the singer, right? To be able to reconstruct the, the original signal. So this in a sense means we do not have to provide the singer to generate the singing voice signal. We just take the musical mixture from which the network can learn the linguistic content, the melody, the timbre to generate the vocoder features and the final singing output. We can listen to the examples again for this one. So this should be independent. I did something wrong here. Imagine there's no heaven. And the output. Imagine there's no heaven. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. And the output. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Um, we did some subjective evaluation for this, again, using AB listening test. And, um, well, we can see again that in terms of source isolation, it, uh, it 
uh, outperforms by a wide margin the the deep learning based um, baseline which we use, which was the unit. It also improves greatly upon our previously proposed uh, separation via synthesis, the SS algorithm, and um, well, there is a lot of room for improvement in terms of quality of the synthesis, which well we can do overall by using a, a different vocoder. Perhaps that that would be some future research to be done. So, but in conclusion, we see that there is no interference from the backing track. We see that the SDN, the single dependent network, which was provided the one hot vector for the single information, it improves over the separation via synthesis method. So we can see that the content extraction method that we propose here actually works. And we also see that the SIN, which was supposed to have the bottleneck information of the uh, of the singer, as, uh, also improves over the SDN, which suggests that the bottleneck is actually learning more than just the singer identity, which we hypothesize. However, for the purposes of, of separation via synthesis, this actually works quite well since the quality is improved. We see that the the overall quality of the synthesis can still be improved, perhaps by using a, a different book order. But for now, what we have is a framework where we can uh, we have a methodology for extracting the singer identity and the timbre from the mixture. We have a methodology for extracting the linguistic content and for F0 estimation. I didn't really talk much about this, but um, it's, uh, it's in the thesis, uh, actually. Um, so um, we see that there is a lot of interest in the field of voice conversion, and we see that this will lead to more improvements in the representation of the linguistic content. There's a lot of interest in F0 estimation, as well as a lot of interest in, in Bukhara uh, methodologies, just, uh, just in the interspeech conference, which was concluded last, last month, there were about 32 algorithms proposed for voice conversion, and if I'm not wrong, around 15 uh, vocoder method, deep, le deep learning based vocoders or neural vocoders proposed just last month. So there is a lot of interest in this field. And I believe this, this framework for now is component agnostic and can be improved uh, over the next, well, it can be improved on. Um, we're coming to the second part of the, of the thesis, which is on ensemble singing. So, this is basically source separation applied to SATB coils, the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. So the soprano, alto, tenor, bass is a very old, it's a very well-practiced and it has been practiced for a long time and across, across the globe. The format is, uh, consists of four voices, uh, four parts, the soprano part and the alto part, which are the higher ranges going from 260 to 880. 880 and from 190 to 660 hertz and the lower parts are the tenor and the bass which are generally given to male singers and have a lower frequency range. So what we propose is uh, first to separate the soprano, alto, tenor and bass parts from a coil mixture um, for, for the purposes of remixing or resynthesis which we'll get to later the applications but uh, we used four, we tested four of the, let's say the state of the art uh, algorithms at the time, the open and mix algorithm works on the spectrogram and is, it was provided as the benchmark for, uh, for musical source separation for uh, the CSEC campaign in uh, 2018, I believe, and 2019. So, um, this provided the benchmark for from the musical source separation side, but we also see that uh, the choir is a mixture of of uh, uh, well voices. So uh, we also believe that speech source separation was pertinent to the uh, source separation in terms of choir. So we tested a speech source um, source separation algorithm, the CONTASNET, which uh, when it came out. It was surpassing the ideal time frequency magnitude masking for source separation and was uh, pretty much the state of the art for speech source separation. We wanted to try that as well to see if uh, speech source separation algorithms function better. We also tried the unit based algorithm, which is the uh, which was working on the spectrogram as well as its uh, 
its uh, uh, waveform counterpart, the WaveUnit. And this we wanted to do because most of the of the recent uh, well, now the research in source separation is mostly on waveform on the waveform domain, and we wanted to see just how well waveform-based algorithms would adapt to this. Uh, particularly given that we have very limited data. We have just four data sets and these data sets have the, like the choral singing data set has, um, has three songs with four singers per part. They, they were all recorded in varying conditions because it's very hard to, to actually record a choir. And this also leads to leakage between the parts within a choir. So particularly within the Facebook, uh, the ECD, there is some leakage between, let's say, the soprano and the alto, and the alto and the tenor, and the tenor and the bass parts. So, but what we do have is the advantage of using uh, various permutations and combinations of singers within the song for augmenting data uh, for training. So the first thing we did was to actually clean somehow the, uh, well, no, the first thing we did was actually train the models. Oops, oops, oops. So to train the models, we used all possible permutations and combinations of stringers within a song, within a data set uh, to train the models. We first trained on just the choral singing data set, the CSD, and then we combined the CSD with the Bach Chorales data set, which only contains quartet. So it only has one singer per part. And we use this to clean the, the SMUC data set, which had a lot of uh, leakage from other parts. We can just have an idea of how we cleaned it. So this is the leakage part. You can see the parts are actually mixed. When we pass this through the algorithm, through the train algorithm, we get something like. It's not ideal, but it is much cleaner than before. So this, the ECD we use for training, uh, for, uh, for uh, testing the algorithms, while the CSD and the BCD we used for training. So we have some evaluation results. We see that mostly the, the unit, uh, the open and mix algorithm outperformed the other algorithms, particularly when it was augmented with the, uh, when the CSD was augmented with the BCD which uh, we'll get to the conclusions a bit later, but let's just have a listen to the separated examples from the unmix with the open unmix with uh, BCD and CSD. So even though there's some a lot of artifacts, it actually it actually works decently well, and we see that augmenting the data, even if even though it's just by with quartets or single singers per part, we still see a big improvement over just using the um, one single data set. Also, in terms of interference, we see or particularly we see the open and mix algorithm outperforming. The, the contrast net, the speech baseline. And we see that the wave unit and the unit are mostly on par. It shows that waveform-based models perform just as well as spectrogram-based uh, spectrogram models. And we see that future training as more and more waveform-based mo uh, sports separation moves towards waveform-based models, uh, choral singing can be, uh, they can be adapted towards choral singing. We also see that musical source separation algorithms are more suited for uh, for choral singing than speech source algorithms. And we see that quartet based data can effectively use uh, for data augmentation for future training. So the last part we'll come to is on unison singing. So unison singing is 
multiple singers singing the same time, the simultaneously singing the same uh, linguistic and melodic content. And this leads to an effect of unison, wherein the listener only perceives a single pitch coming from the unison, even though there are more than one singer singing at one time. Right? And what we want to do is to synthesize a, singing, a single singing voice signal from this unison, and also to uh, synthesize a unison from this single singing, uh, singing voice signal. So the first thing we do is called unison to solo, where we have a unison input and we use the network proposed earlier, the singular independent network to extract the linguistic, the melodic content and the timbre. And this is used to generate vocoder parameters, which is used to synthesize a single singing voice. We can maybe have a listen. So this is the input unison. Niño, Dios te amor, So um, the output. So uh, for the linguistic content in Dumber, we use the uh, the singer independent network, while for the melody, we used a monophonic F0 extraction system known as CREP, which because it's monophonic, it was supposed to only extract a single frame. Uh, a single frequency, a uh, single fundamental frequency, which is a representative of the of the perceived single pitch. The other thing we did was going from solo to a unison. So the first thing, while well, it follow, follows a similar architecture, but the what we do is we add some melodic uh, pitch and timing deviations to the melody, which is added while making copies of the original input singing voice. And so this is what it sounds like in the input. And with the pitch and timing deviations. And the other thing we did was to add timbre variations. So we can use the SDN, the singer dependent network to generate more timbres with the same linguistic content while we add deviations to the, uh, to the pitch and the timing or the melody. So just the same example, but passed through the, uh, through both singer variation and pitch and timing deviations. So what we see is, well, this part I didn't really uh, cover, but the, uh, we did some analysis and found that the, the monophonic pitch extracted by CREP was closer to the mean. And well, this will take some time to actually explain, but the conclusion we can draw from this is the mean of the individual pitches of the singer present in the unison is close to the uh, single perceived pitch, which a listener perceives when listening to the unison. We also noticed that pitch and timing deviations are required for the perception of unison, even though variations in timbre, which we saw in the last slide, are not quite that important. And of course, as always, there is room for improvement of, of uh, quality, which we've discussed before. Um, finally, we actually also present a complete framework for core synthesis, in which case we have a multi-singer choral recording as input. This is passed through the source separation algorithm to extract the four, uh, four unison stems. So um, we're assuming that there are more than one singer per part in the input. We have the soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. We pass this through the, um, to the content extraction. So we estimate the uh, F0 as well as the linguistic content. We do some transformations and resynthesize to get single singer stems, pass through unison, Oh, sorry, solo to unison and finally remixed. So this can be used for teaching purposes by either changing the range, uh, transposing the signal up one pitch or down one pitch as, as more suitable to the, to the range of the practitioner. So you can see an example of this. This is the input. <laughs> Uh, 
uh, transposed one pitch up and semitone up. And transpose down. And one, one final thing to note is that the the um, well the content extraction systems, the linguistic content extraction system, was not trained on any of the languages or the singers which were used in this uh, in, in this part of the study. So this also shows how how robust it is to the language, as well as uh, as well as to the singers. Um, we can finally come to some conclusions and applications. So, First application is actually we, we went, we took the analysis synthesis system, uh, framework a bit beyond the voice and we worked on a single shot percussion system, which would analyze, we analyzed the timbre properties and the, well, basically just the timbre properties of the signal and these can be used to synthesize the same single uh, shot percussion system. So we can make changes to the timbre and synthesize. And we did the same thing for percussive loops passing it to this anal analysis synthesis frameworks to well, uh, synthesize percussive loops. Finally, we have some conclusions. So we have presented a co comp component agnostic framework for separation via synthesis, a feedforward singing voice synthesis system, a language and singer independent linguistic content representation for synthesis, and I say manipulation because we could, as we see, we can man manipulate some of the content for, uh, well, for the desired purpose. Uh, there is an initial foray, let's say, into source separation for ensemble singing. It's a field which is uh, increasingly uh, picking up interest. Uh, let's say in the last inter speech uh, concluded last month, there was another uh, algorithm proposed for source separation for ensemble singing. Finally, we also proposed a framework for unison to solo and solo to unison synthesis. And all proposed more methodologies are available as open source repositories with code and pre-trained models. Uh, there were nine conference publications uh, during this uh, thesis and uh, one journal publication. And I think uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you.